An A player is that team member who will go above and beyond for your business. They, A players will encounter problems and go, what opportunities exist here? How might I solve this? What are the ways I'm going to get around this and get to the other side? So somebody who's not an A player, like a B player candidate, would see the problem and just go, I don't know what to do. I'm going to wait till the boss gets back. Or I just won't do anything at all and nothing gets done. Mm -hmm. And so that A player is a highly motivated go-getter. They're a problem solver and they really hold the best interest of the company, of the clients, of themselves. They're able to think broadly and, and balance all the different interests that are involved. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question, what has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling, the business psychologist, the author of How to Hire the Best, and your co-host on the Profit by Design podcast. Weekly, my co-host, Mike Bruno, and I bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. At Tap the Potential, we know that you want to be freed from the constant demands of your business. In order to do that, you need a business that supports your life. The problem is you have a cash-sucking business taking over your life, leaving you frustrated and discouraged. We believe work supports life, not the other way around. We understand you're paying a team and you're still having to do it all. There should be accountability. It shouldn't be this hard, which is why through our proprietary coaching system, we help thousands of business owners just like you have more time for what's important to them and grow profit by 300 to 800%. Here's how we do it. First, take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Next, meet with our success team lead to debrief your results. Then join our Better Business, Better Life program. By the end of your first year with us, you will have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than you've ever had before. So take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment so you can stop working so hard for so little return. Take your life back. Profit designers, today we have one of our favorite guests back with us to talk about a very important topic that many entrepreneurs are completely putting on hold right now. But you all as profit designers and members of the Tap the Potential community will be well ahead of the game by heeding the strategy and advice we share today on the Profit by Design podcast. So consider yourself privileged to have some insider strategic information. Erin Longmoon is joining us. Erin Longmoon's mission in life is to eradicate toxic workplaces. She believes that everyone deserves to love their job and feel like they are contributing to a greater purpose. As the owner of Zephyr Recruiting, she accomplishes this mission by matching great small businesses with their right fit employees. Erin has more than two decades of experience helping small businesses and has owned five businesses herself. The passion to eradicate toxic workplaces comes from a place a lot of us can resonate with. When Erin was an employee at a company with a toxic workplace, she saw firsthand how the culture impacted everyone on a deep level. The toxic workplace reduced morale and productivity, followed her home, and led good employees to quit. Erin dreams of changing people's lives by helping them realize that they are deeply worthy. She also dreams about being the next Stevie Nicks and being friends with the Dalai Lama. Her magic powers are empathy, ability to read people, coming up with new and awesome ideas, and making a perfectly cooked filet mignon. As the owner of Zephyr Recruiting, she oversees an amazing work-at-home team who shares her passion for supporting great places to work. And if you know anything about Mike and I, we are all about 
highly profitable, great places to work here on the Profit by Design podcast. And that is why we appreciate Aaron so much. At Tap the Potential, Aaron has done so many wonderful things for our clients as we support them in building their culture and getting the employer of choice branding out there. Erin and her team at Zephyr Recruiting have helped a number of our clients in the tightest labor markets, including construction, hire the best. So with that, let's join our conversation with Erin. So Erin, welcome back to the Profit by Design podcast. You are one of our most loved guests. So it is an honor to have you back with us. Thank you. Welcome. We are in such interesting times when it comes to recruiting A players and hiring A players, especially with coronavirus going on. So many companies looking at, boy, work has slowed down. I've had to lay people off. I don't know what's coming. So we actually, as we were talking before coming on the podcast, the three of us actually see things very differently than most of the entrepreneurial community right now. And so today we're going to focus on the opportunity that we can seize and hopefully help our profit designers seize, especially in preparation for things turning around in the economy. So Mike, I know you you have lots of questions for Aaron, and I'm going to turn this over to you. What do you want to ask her first? Okay, awesome. So yeah, like you mentioned, I definitely see this as an opportunity, and a lot of other business owners that I'm talking to see this as an opportunity. One thing is, you know, people have unfortunately had to lay people off. So this is an opportunity really to, number one, rebuild the employee brand of the company, mm-hmm. right? Right. And build on it, right? Maybe create a little bit more of a branding purpose and then have an opportunity to look for new A players to fit on the team. How do you see, you know, maybe talk a little bit about what you see now and what that opportunity looks like. How can somebody really take advantage of what's going on and rebuild their team and get stronger and really prosper in the future? Yeah, yeah. We're seeing a number of things. That's a great question. I appreciate you bringing this topic to your listeners. We are seeing a few things. We are definitely seeing an uptick of candidates in our candidate pool applying for jobs that we do have open. We have a number of roles that we're still recruiting for and not just the numbers, but the quality. So there are actually really good A players that are looking to make a change themselves, whether they were permanently laid off because a company needed to close its doors. We've definitely heard those stories. We've heard stories of some companies taking this opportunity to do their, you know, instigate their retirement plan and the owner going that, you know, I'm kind of done. This is a great time to just bow out. And so we've seen some amazing employees being released for those reasons. So it's not just sheer numbers, but we're actually seeing better, like nice, good quality A players looking for work. And some other things we are seeing, as you kind of touched upon, some people are doing hiring freezes because I think of all the uncertainty, we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know what it's going to look like when we're done. So we are seeing that. We are like-minded to the two of you and that we think that there is opportunity here instead of doing a hiring freeze of actually strategizing so that you are ready to hit the ground running when this is over. So we can, do you want me to just keep going? Because I can keep going. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to elaborate on that from the strategy side, because Tap the Potential, I've been having lots of conversations with entrepreneurs who are looking, this is my opportunity to build the culture from the ground up that I've always wanted to have. So I have cleared the decks. I've gotten rid of the team members that more toxic because I didn't want to keep them on my payroll through this. Mm -hmm. And now I want to be prepared for the rebuild. And I want to be very intentional about my hiring and going after the A players that I want to have on my team. So one of the things we've been advising our clients to do is to have their shopping list ready. So by shopping list, I mean, in terms of equipment, in terms of the supplies, anything that they would want to get on sale as other businesses, 
spouses are not making it through and looking to mm-hmm. put things, you know, get rid of things. There's an opportunity to buy things, but we don't want to get emotional about it. It's just like when we go to the store and we see a good bargain, it doesn't make sense to buy that bargain if we don't need it or we don't have an immediate price right. for it. So we want to have our list of what we're looking for. I think the same thing applies for hiring. Yes. And building our team. So in our Better Business, Better Life program at Tap the Potential, one of the things we help our clients do is to identify their sweet spot of the business, which through coronavirus means we're having our clients have more and more conversation with their top 20% of their clients who are responsible for 80% of the revenue and looking at how do I increase the revenue from that top 20% by 25%, which will replace the business that might drop off from the bottom 80% of clients and customers. Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, we're going to run this business in a much more tight, focused way. And so if we have let go of people on our team that are no longer, that are not a good fit, they're not right for our culture. And we're going to look at that, our new sweet spot, our more highly defined sweet spot, And then we're going to be prepared for growth as we come out of coronavirus because many of our clients have been doing profit first and they are in a very strong cash position. Mm -hmm. So they are not fearful. They're in a place where they can go shopping for the bargains, essentially, as people are not as their sales. So keeping that sweet spot in mind, we want to think about the roles that we're going to need to fill as we grow the business strategically from that sweet spot. So we help our clients start looking at a year out and two years out, what are the roles that are going to need to be filled? With coronavirus right now, instead of that two-year time frame, I think it's much more wise to look at a one-year time frame. So over the next year, what are these roles? And then prioritize the order of hiring. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, I was having a conversation with two of our clients talking about going through the entire hiring process. And right now, because the business is slow, having three or four candidates that you consider to be A players that you would make an offer to and just saying, as soon as I have opportunity in the business, I'm calling you up and let's get you going. And so what that does is it creates efficiency in the hiring process because you're doing it all at once, not scattered here and there. And if you're working with Zephyr Recruiting and you guys, you are doing a lot of the legwork for them and serving up those A player candidates and that saves them a lot of time. I always advocate for interviewing and having three or four candidates when possible that you would make an offer to. Yes. Right. And this way, even if those candidates offered other opportunities in the interim, you probably still are going to have at least one or two that are ready to go to work for you. Right. Right. I would love to hear your thoughts on that process. Yeah, I think that sounds really great. And I'll tell you that, you know, we didn't really have because of low unemployment in the past, we didn't really often find that many people, you know, up to four people for our clients to be able to, that we considered a players that we wanted to show that, you know, bring to them to interview. And now we have that opportunity for the first time in a long time. You probably can find three or four that are willing to kind of be standby. And it does take a very long time to do the recruiting process. We often tell our clients, I mean, they usually, if they do it themselves, they're spending up to 40 hours per role based on our research. And so if you've got multiple roles, I mean, we've got clients who have five, six, seven roles a year. So they're spending 200, maybe up to 300 hours a year themselves trying to recruit for these roles. And that just takes so much time. Time, right? Like what else could you do with that time? It's a lot. So I believe, yes, 40 hours a roll. But Mike, like Mike and I were talking about before we were coming on the podcast, I think it's probably more than that. And even if we are spending <laughs> 40 hours, we are probably wasting that time because we are not right. using the how to hire the best methodology and your the methodology that utilize, Erin. Mm-hmm. So it's not strategic. It's kind of just 
shooting in the dark. Yeah, it is shooting in the dark. And that's, you know, there's a lot to talk about there too, but just circle back to what you're saying about using this time. You know, this is a great time to do that because once we hit the ground running after coronavirus, at least all, a lot of the experts say that we're going to boom, we're going to see a big revival, you know, we're going to be busy and I'm very hopeful for that. And I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity there that will make us busy. So lining those A players up, like you're suggesting as sort of your bench, you know, like they're on your bench waiting to go is a great idea. The other thing that we're doing, um, Zephyr, with some of our clients where it makes the most sense is also having them hire people on a contingency. So they're actually making an offer to the like the one A player they really want and they don't want to lose them. So they're making an offer that's contingent and that contingency is, you know, your pretty typical contingency. You're going to come back in and for the first 30 days, it's sort of a working interview. You know, we're going to evaluate after 30 days if this truly is the right fit. But if all things point in the direction of you're the one we want, don't lose them. And then what you can do in the interim is get them onboarded, start whatever kind of training that you can do virtually, have them meet other team members. You know, you can do a lot so that when this is over, they are ready to hit the ground running. And I think there's a lot of flexibility in there for us entrepreneurs in terms of what we would need to pay Mm -hmm. someone to come in and do that because a lot can be done virtually right now. A lot of the training could be done virtually. It could be done from their home on a part-time basis. So we don't have to bring them fully onto the payroll in a full-time position with benefits and everything else. I think the consideration is to look at what are they making on unemployment and try to be a little higher than that so that it's attractive to them to start training with you. But just like we advocate in how to hire the best using that strategy, when you're hiring, put an offer out there that's a little bit higher than the going rate. And then over time, show them how you're going to get them to the 90th percentile for pay over a year or two, assuming they hit certain benchmarks. So I think that still is relevant here. I think though the opportunity and what is you know, it removes the risk for as us as entrepreneurs is to say, I'm going to bring you on on a part-time basis to begin with. You're going to work from home. The benefits may not be there right away, but that will kick in down the road. So it makes it a little more affordable for us to mm-hmm. get them onboarded and be ready when things pick up. They're ready and ready to go. Yeah. Erin, you also had some ideas as well about opportunities to make it to reduce some of the risk for employers. I have learned just in the last few days that some states, and I don't want to listen because I don't know exactly which one, so look at your own state, but some states are actually allowing employees to come on board for a limited number of hours per week, and it is not affecting their unemployment. And I happen to know Washington State is one of those. That's where I first learned about this. They can, you know, you can bring an employee on very part-time and have them do some baseline work. This could work for training and onboarding and things, and it doesn't actually affect an employment payment. So it could be a win-win for both. You still want to pay them for that time. It isn't volunteer. You know, they would get some kind of an hourly rate or some kind of a compensation that you come up with, like Sabrina had suggested, maybe start it a little lower and then, you know, incrementally increase it as this crisis, but it could be a great win for both. So look at that, look at your unemployment in your state and see if that's an option. The other thing that I want to bring out here is some of our clients in our Better Business, Better Life program are booming right now with their businesses, surprisingly enough, Mm -hmm. and especially in construction where they've had a hard time hiring. It's been an employee's market, not an employer's market. They are seizing this opportunity. There's a lot of people out there in roles that have traditionally been very hard to fill in the construction Mm -hmm. world, project management, lead carpenters. There's plenty of choice out there right now. I know. I'm nodding. I'm like nodding my head. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We are seeing a significant difference, not just the numbers of candidates that we're seeing for our lead carpenter roles and our project manager roles in construction, but the quality. We are getting quality A player candidates. Like we said, like they're also taking this opportunity to look for something different. You know, people are really reevaluating right now, you know, what they want out of life. And it's sort of a pause. Life has given us a big pause and a lot of people are taking this time, like you said earlier, to take the opportunity to make changes they want to make. So this is an 
actually an excellent opportunity to be recruiting in the construction industry, especially for those roles that have been really hard to fill. And I just want to highlight and shout out for you, Aaron and Zephyr Recruiting, how instrumental you have been with our clients, especially in construction, but other industries as well, in helping them fill those harder to fill roles. And this one client in particular brought on a carpenter that moved across the country to Mm -hmm. go to work for them. And it was because of their strong employer of choice and the employer brand marketing Mm -hmm. that they had done with us at Tap the Potential that you guys at Zephyr Recruiting then came in and built upon and leveraged for them with their recruiting. So I think this is a good point to pivot a little bit here and talk about why employer brand marketing is going to be important now more than ever, regardless of if it's an employee market or an employer market when it comes to hiring after coronavirus. Yes, this is definitely one of our favorite topics right now at Zephyr, and we're working with a lot of our clients on this. This is an incredible time. I mean, it always, employment brand marketing, which is just a quick you know, explanation for those who don't know. It's similar to regular marketing that you normally do for your ideal clients, only you're doing it for your ideal employees. So you are branding yourself as an employer of choice in your community. And you're doing it through a variety of channels, social media, local events. I mean, there's, you know, school involvement in maybe local colleges that might be in your area. I mean, there's all different channels that you can use to market yourself as an employer of choice. And this has always been important. But, you know, like I said, people are taking a pause. And I think a lot of business owners we're seeing are taking this time to work on their business, you know, and really doing a lot of CEO hat wearing and going how, you know, again, strategically, how do we position ourselves to, to seize this opportunity and what's going to happen after this crisis is over. So this is a great time to either build upon your employer brand or to, if it's the first time you've ever done it, to, to start doing it. And when you're in a low unemployment market like we have been, it really helps attract those A players that you want to attract and pull them out of potentially other jobs that they have where maybe they're not very happy and they start seeing what a great place you are to work and they, you know, go, you know, I really want to make a change. It's, I can do that in this kind of a market. And then in a high unemployment market, which is what we may be facing, what we're facing right now is it pull, it does the same thing, but it pulls them out of, you know, it's like the diamond in the rough. It just Uh, There's so much noise, you could potentially get 500 applications at this point. So different than what we were doing a few months ago. How do you attract those A players and pull them out of that, you know, massive pool of candidates? And that's where brand marketing can help you with that as well. So I want to talk to that because at Tap the Potential with, you know, teaching how to hire the best and writing that those books over the years, one of the biggest complaints that I hear from business owners is I don't have the time to mm-hmm. write a job ad. I don't even know what to put in a job ad. I have clients who have physical symptoms when they think about creating a job ad, you know, stomach aches and you yeah. know, dry mouth and, and just the time. And so we teach them hire the best. I'm going to kind of just walk through the course and what I saw our clients doing that allowed them to attract hard to hire for positions and fill those positions and how you guys came in and then did the legwork for them. So in the Hire the Best course, we're teaching business owners to define the culture of the business by identifying the immutable laws. Right. And then those immutable laws are our core values that we business owners have, and they become the seeds of the culture in the business. And the challenge around immutable laws is they're so much a part of who we are. We don't see them. And we just kind of assume the rest of the world operates that way. And the time that the immutable laws are really brought to our attention is when someone violates an immutable law and we go, hey. Yeah, right. <laughs> thinking, you know, how could, what kind of screwed up world are they in? And then we realize, oh, 
that's an immutable law. Not everybody else operates that way. And so we want to start to articulate what those values are that are right. under that and make them public in our business. And then look at our current team and see who's in alignment with the immutable laws and who's not. And so that's what we're seeing right now is a lot of our clients are letting go of the team members whose immutable laws are not a good Not aligned, fit. right. Because they know it's going to be easy to hire a players and they're like, I'm ready. I'm going to clear the decks here. And moving from that, and, and you heard me talk earlier about the sweet spot of the business and having the role chart for each role that we want to hire for in the business, we want to identify how that role relates to the sweet spot, how the person in that role will drive the profitability of the business. Mike and I are always talking on the Profit by Design podcast about designing sustainably profitable business. Mm -hmm. So that profit question needs to be in the hiring process from the get-go. If we entrepreneurs cannot say how this person in this role is going to impact the company's profitability, right. we have no business hiring for that role because that is just going to become a person that has an undefined role in the company and a wasted resource. Right. So we need to answer that profitability question. And there's two ways that somebody can do that. They can make the company money or save the company money. But we want to articulate that for them as that relates to the sweet spot and how the top clients of the business will be served. From that, we want to look at if this person can't get anything done for me in a given day or a given week, or they can only get one thing done for me in a given day or a given week, what is the most important thing I need the person in this role to do? What is the one result? that I'm looking mm -hmm. Does it relate to the sweet spot, top clients and profitability? If the answers to that are yes, that's the one result. And then we wanna think through what are the personality strengths needed to deliver that one result exceptionally well day in and day out. And now we have a clear definition of the type of person we're looking to hire, which sets us up nicely for our clients to then go to Aaron right. <laughs> and say, okay, I need, I'm hiring for this role. Here's our immutable laws. This is, these are our values. And these are the personality strengths that I'm looking for. You guys do such a beautiful job from that point on with helping them write their job ad and using the how to hire the best methodology to write a job ad that really stands out. And again, that is part of this employer brand marketing that we're talking about. There's going to be a lot of job ads out there. How do you make your job ad stand out and scream loudly to the A player that you want to attract? Right. So Erin, do you want to talk a little bit about that and how you guys craft those job ads and what goes into that? And just, I want to tack on, it's not just about attract the right A players that you want to attract. You're what we call the right field employer, your ideal employee. It is also going to hopefully repel the ones yes. who are not a right fit. And that is going to help exponentially if unemployment goes up. That's going to be really important. Well, and that's where the big time savings for entrepreneurs comes in because mm -hmm. when you write that job ad correctly for them and it repels the wrong people, there's a lot mm -hmm. fewer applicants coming coming in and that is the ideal situation that we want to have. Yes. And that is ideal. I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of people will, you know, panic, even our clients when we tell them we had, you know, 30 applicants this week and they'll go like, what? That's not very much. But it's actually when we look at that and we go, yeah, but you know, a good number of them are actually quality that we want to interview, then that's the kind of result that we want. So lower numbers, but a higher percentage of those that, you know, we want to spend time with and get to know. That job post, one of the things that we do, right, you know, is the very first first few sentences have got to be the hook. It's just like advertising. It just, it is marketing. And so you have to think about how do I grab the attention of the A players that I want to attract, you know, instantly, almost before their brain has a chance to totally absorb what they're reading. So those first one, two sentences have got to be strong. They have to speak to those immutable laws. It has to very quickly a stage for we're the employer that is the right match for you. So that's a really key part. And then, you know, you still want to keep them engaged throughout the job post with various components. So we have a structure similar to yours, you know, within our job posts that speaks to them at very various parts, you know, but that hook has to be there from the very first sentence. Otherwise they'll pass, you know, they'll just move on to somebody else. 
Uh The other thing that we teach and I've seen you incorporate in your job ads is the inoculation. Yep. So when we inoculate, we want to be upfront right off the bat. What are the most hard, undesirable aspects of this role? What's going to be difficult? And so psychologically, this is very important because when you have an A player and like we haven't even defined A players. I know we've had lots of episodes on the Profit by Design podcast about (laughs) hiring A players, but maybe somebody's brand new to us. So let's define what an A player is here. An A player is that team member who will go above and beyond for your business. They, A players will encounter problems and go, what opportunities exist here? How might I solve this? What are the ways I'm going to get around this and get to the other side? So somebody who's not an A player, like a B player candidate, would see the problem and just go, I don't know what to do. I'm going to wait till the boss gets back. Or I just won't do anything at all and nothing gets done. Mm -hmm. And so that A player is a highly motivated go-getter. They're a problem solver and they really hold the best interest of the company, of the clients, of themselves. They're able to think broadly and, and balance all the different interests that are involved. And so that's really what we're getting at. A player's when they are in the right role in your company, working from their strengths will be 900 to 1200% more productive than a warm body. Right. So it is highly worth our while to put all this time and effort and money into investing all of that into attracting these A players. Because again, when we're talking about designing a sustainably profitable business, when we fill it with A players, we can have these lean and mighty teams because A players get a lot done. A lot done. Yep. And they're more productive when they're not encumbered by warm bodies. So, but back to the inoculation impact psychologically for A players, when you inoculate them, really, you're just throwing down a challenge. (laughs) You're saying, this is going to be hard. Let's see what you do with this. And most of us A players will be like, I'm rising to this challenge. I want to show you what I can do. Watch out. So for the wrong people, they will read whatever you've put in there and say, oh, that's awful. I'm not going to do that. Forget it. And they'll stop. And so if you've written a good job description and it's kind of long and lengthy and it's got that inoculation in there, those C and D players are going to get weeded out. They're not, first off, they're not going to read the whole job ad. Yeah. The B players who read the old job ad will get to the inoculation and go, oh, not me. I'm out of here. And so what you're really left with are those A players and psychologically they've been challenged and now they're ready to show you what they can do. Right, right. I fully agree with that approach. It's very important. And I would suggest what I will say from the recruiting standpoint, what we are seeing or what we have been seeing, it'll be interesting to see if this changes, is that a lot of people don't read the post like you just said. They'll only read the first couple sentences. They'll go, that sounds great. I'm just going to throw in my resume. So there's a couple of things to do there. But one is make that inoculation piece a little bit higher. So if they do read a first couple paragraphs and they skip the rest, it's in there early. And then the other thing, of course we've talked about is ask for some kind of a, why can't I think that you specify what you want them to submit when they apply? Yeah. So give them a little test. Give them a test. Thank you. That's what it is. (laughs) We do this all the time. That they need to do. That's a little unusual that lets you know they actually read Read. the job ad and pay attention to detail. Because that's one of the things we hear over and over from our clients is they're so frustrated with team members who don't pay attention to the details. So a perfect opportunity to screen for that is in the job ad. So you can tell them to put purple cow or you know purple squirrel in the subject line of the email that they're sending in. Well, and then you can set a filter on the email. And if they're not saying purple squirrel in their subject line, you're never even going to see their application coming in. Right. And, you know, with technology today, they're like, we always ask for a cover letter, just about every single role we ask for a cover letter. And there's a number of reasons. Part of it's the test. And so if somebody doesn't submit a cover letter, we just, we don't screen them. That was the first test. And if you didn't pass it, you know, sorry. And then we ask for something specific within the cover letter, like your purple cow or, you know, whatever, because some people are applying like through Indeed or, you know, some list and you're not actually getting an email from them. So just, you know, think about the platforms you're going to be using mm-hmm. and the ways in which they'll apply and just make that test um, be something that they can actually achieve with that platform. But it is the same idea. And that will also, especially if we have high unemployment, it's going to help you a lot with 
you know, narrowing that pool down to those A players. So I just want to point out all the strategy that we're talking about here is really about designing a gauntlet that you are taking your A players through. Mm -hmm. So we're not trying to make it easy for your A players to get to you. We're trying to make it challenging for them to get to you so that only the strong survive and that those are the ones that you're going to spend your time with interviewing because interviewing is the most time demanding part of this process. Yes. And so I know there's things that you guys do on your end to support, you know, the the whole gauntlet and the filtering process. What are some other things that you support business owners with on that, Erin? Well, in the interviewing process, I mean, that's one of our, you know, main focuses. And one of the things that differentiates us from other recruiters is we actually spend a lot of time with the candidates. We call them the finalists. So, you know, we've gone through, we've screened, we've narrowed the pool down to the ones that look like A players. And on paper, you know, they followed our rules, they passed the test, all that. Then our interview process in total is almost two full hours by the time we're done with the candidate before we would ever even present them to our clients. Mm -hmm. And so, we have a two-step process of interviewing them and, you know, they need to pass both and they're very in depth. One of them is kind of a short meet and greet, just making sure that the top level deal breakers, you know, are in place and we know if they've passed that. And then the second one is a much further deep dive. We use a lot of like coaching techniques to help really understand who this candidate is. What are their mutable laws? Do they just say them or do they actually live them? We, as we train our recruiters to see these you know, indications and to pull out from candidates more and tell us more about that. How'd that make you feel? You know, we're getting to know them as a person as well as skill set and experience and all the things that, you know, obviously need to be vetted. And that saves them a ton of time as well as in the end, they're getting the best of the best. Yes. Who we're presenting. And so I want to just speak as the business psychologist who coaches a lot of business owners through the hiring process, the interview process, there's actually two points where things are going to go awry in this process. It'll be the interview and it'll be failure to check references and do a different kind of reference check. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But the interview process, we teach our business owners kind of like what you're describing, how to ask those in-depth questions that really pull out. Is someone just giving lip service to immutable mm-hmm. laws or do they really live and breathe that? The And the challenge that a lot of business owners have is they have no HR department. So they are doing all this hiring and interviewing by themselves, and you don't have anybody to bounce ideas off of about the candidate. So when Zephyr comes in and they're pre-screening and they're doing this two-hour interview and then they're serving the candidate up to you and saying, I think this is someone worthwhile, it's that extra level of assurance that here's an objective set of ears who's interviewed and who hear the immutable laws so that when you as the employer go in and you're interviewing, you can do further exploration with them around the immutable laws. And that is really, I want to emphasize, it's not about hiring for skill set. The best thing to hire for is goodness of fit with the culture and the immutable laws. So if someone is not, if they're showing you they are not a good fit with your immutable laws, you want to stop the interview right there. Don't even waste time because it's not going to go any further. But if you are seeing signs that someone's immutable laws really align with yours, you want to interview and go deeper and deeper into that. And that is a very worthwhile good bit of time. And it's that extra level of reassurance when Zephyr is saying, you know what, we've pre-screened them for you. We think this is a mm-hmm. good fit. It's worth it to t- for you to now take that time to do that. Yeah. And I think because, you know, like you mentioned, we're outside. Somebody said to me the other day, you can't see the label if you're in the jar or something like that. It's like, so we have objective eyes. We have your best interests in mind. We work for you to find you the best candidate. So we are able to be less emotional, I guess, about the choices and making sure we see people very objectively. And um, having that outside set of eyes, I think, is also what helps mitigate the the hiring mistakes a lot, you know, and so we end up with candidates that are both absolutely the right fit, the A player, they fit the immutable laws, the culture, all of that, but then they also stay. The retention is there because that connection that they have to your mission and to your immutable laws is the right match for them as well. 
So they are bought in to you as a company and who you are and what you're about. And this gets the emotional connection that is there, which moves this from a transactional relationship. You show up, I pay you. You don't show up, I don't pay you. To a highly engaged process where they are not likely to jump ship because someone makes them a dollar an hour more offer. They feel invested in the company's mission and they feel like they're a part of the team. You can't just hire them and then it's all done. You have to persist with the onboarding process which is another thing that we help our clients with in their Better Business, Better Life program, is onboarding doesn't last for the first month. It is really into the first year, year and a half, two years as you are bringing them into your culture. And if you're thinking about an employee that's not going to stay with you long term, you don't want to invest that time. But if you've done everything right in your hiring process, you have set things up so that they are emotionally engaged and they are likely to stay. And that onboarding process just comes in and seals the deal over and over and over for them that they've made the right choice. They don't want to leave. Right. One of the things I just want to briefly mention here, because it will be tempting for entrepreneurs to skip this step is the threat of a reference check. And Mm. this is where you have the real opportunity to test out what that candidate is saying to you and find out if they're telling you the truth or if they're exaggerating. And so when they are applying with you, you have them sign a statement that they understand if they advance in the interview process, they will be asked by you to make connections with people of your choice for you to interview about them. And this is an opportunity to get around the typical reference check where you just get somebody worked here for such and such time, but I can't tell you anything else about them. This gives you the opportunity to see the candidate in action. So the candidate has to arrange these conversations for you. They have to schedule it. A players will do it right away and they won't have any problem. Anybody that you pick from the stories they tell you about their past and what they've done, they will be able to get those conversations to happen. And they'll do it within a day or two. When somebody's not an A player and they've blown a lot of smoke about their abilities, they're not going to be able to arrange those conversations. And so what I want to be really clear on is you're not just calling up previous employers and asking them, you're saying, hey, I want to talk to a coworker that you had on this project. And I want to hear your coworkers input about what it was like to work with you. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to someone that you supervised and what was it like to be supervised by you. So now you're getting more of a 360 perspective on that candidate. This is, for a lot of entrepreneurs, it feels a little time-consuming, awkward, burdensome. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, when our clients have made hiring mistakes and when I go back through and I do a post-mortem with them and I say, okay, let's go through the steps of the process. Which parts did you do thoroughly? Which ones did you skip? Inevitably, it's, well, I was busy. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Do that of a reference check. It was kind of awkward. So we have a lot of clients that tap the potential who will say, do the threat of a reference check. It is worthwhile and it'll, it saves a lot of heartache down the road. Yeah. And we are very similar in our approach and find the same thing. A lot of our clients will just say, well, they don't really matter. They haven't made a difference. And, you know, when we do the same approach where we choose who we're going to do the reference check with and we get the candidates to make those appointments and stuff, you do get a lot more. It's more of a deeper conversation you get to have. Mm -hmm. So we do learn a lot from Mm -hmm. that. One major thing I wanted to bring up as I'm listening to all this is number one, it's overwhelming and completely boring. I hate <laughs> I hate hiring people and just dealing with employees in general. And I'm sure there's some other people out there that feel the pain. Yeah. The real point that I wanted to outline is that it's very, very dangerous right now not to align yourselves or, you know, align yourself and your company with people that can help you with this process right now. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Like your recruiting firm, like tap the potential. It's super important because If you're like me and you're going to put this on the back burner and say, yeah, it really does seem like a great opportunity for me to hire people, but you're really not doing it the right way, it's going to be very damaging. Yes. And as you guys mentioned throughout the call, right now, it's a very positive opportunity. Any business right now has an opportunity to create a very good employee brand, go through the steps and the processes to 
go through all this stuff, identify immutable laws, go through what my players look like, all these different things. That time is going to run out. We don't have an infant window, right? Yes. And if you don't do the right thing now and seek help, professional help to get this done right, and you don't have the time or the energy to do it yourself, it could actually be a detriment to your business because, right. you know, one other thing I listened to, it was actually David Burke, you know, the famous chef. He's a restaurateur here in, in the New York area. He was on a podcast. And one of the things that he talked about is the difficulty is going to be when the switch goes back on and I have to open up all five restaurants at the same exact time, right? So now when you think about that in terms of a business owner, right? Right. Construction guys or any business that's not fully operating right now, that switch goes back on. You have clients, employees, finances, banks, this, materials, boom, 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 right? Yep. It's going to be like literally flipping a business on and having to wear all of those hats all at the same time. Yeah. So how can you possibly hire people then, and then the pool of people to hire from is going to greatly diminish, right? Yep. And one last point I thought of when you were talking about this is that, you know, there's A players that are working for other companies that may get complacent and say, you know what, this company is good to me. I'm working here. Yeah, sometimes I feel like going somewhere else, but I'm just not going to, right? They get comfortable. Well, right now, if they're sitting home, maybe that comfort level has broken down a little bit and now they're open to opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. So now you do have an influx of A players that are sitting there thinking, you know what? Yeah, you know, Mike's been great to me for all these years, but you know what? Yeah, let me see what else is out there, right? And that's where all of these things that you're talking about really come into play. Right. If you're not branding the company properly from an employee perspective, if I'm an A player, why would I go there, right? If the process is not identifying you know, who that A player is and what the company looks like and all that stuff. It's really a lost opportunity. So again, my big thing here is stay out of the danger zone, <laughs> align yourselves with the right people to help you get this done and really position yourself to catapult and go through that growth. That's so, such good, important points, Mike. And I just want to circle back to what you said at the very beginning of that conversation as Aaron and I are geeking <laughs> out over the high. I know, totally. <laughs> talk about all this. This is so much fun. This is our strength. My strength is I've written how to hire the best. I love helping business owners build their A teams and create these highly profitable, great places to work. I live and breathe that stuff. It is fun to me. Yeah. Aaron lives and breathes hiring A players in for great cultures. She loves to support great places to work and build those teams. We geek out over that stuff. So at Tap the Potential, one of our immutable laws is be a gift from your gift. So we teach our clients to hire people and bring people to support their teams around the gifts. Aaron and I have gifts in this way that we want to utilize to support you all in your hiring process as you develop your A player team. If you're relating to Mike, if you've been listening to this going, when does this podcast end? What, you know, what squirrels are running by? Look at that. There's a purple squirrel right there. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big sign. You need our support and we would love to yeah. and take that off of your plate for you. So Erin, I know you have something coming up right now that is very timely and I want to give you the opportunity to talk about that here. Yes, thank you. We are, like I said a little earlier, really trying to promote this idea of employer brand marketing. I think it's a new concept for small businesses, but it is powerful. It is really powerful. And so it's a part of business that's often ignored and we're trying to bring that to the forefront and really encourage people to take some of this time to consider adding that to your business functions. So we're helping out by, we've created a checklist that goes step by step what needs to be done in order Order to develop your employee brand and how to implement it. And that is on our website. And also we are going to be doing a live webinar 
on May 7th. It's at 3 p.m. Eastern time. It's 90 minutes where we are going to walk through that checklist in detail and we're going to answer questions and we're developing about seven or eight uh, complementary tools that will help people to walk through the process. It is an intensive process. I will say this is not a quick, you know, spend an hour on it and you're good to go. This is a marketing strategy and it does take time to develop. So we're coming, we've got great tools. We've got my marketing manager will be on the call with me. So we will be able to answer all your questions. And so that's on May 7th. And if you would like to register for that or get the checklist, come to our website, which is ZephyrRecruiting.com forward slash E, B is in boy, M is in Mary. That's for employment brand marketing. So we just shortened it for you. So you don't have to spell it all out. So we'd love to see you there and help support you and your employment brand marketing, getting that up and running. And we will get that link in the show notes. Just to be super clear, because sometimes it doesn't always come across on audio, how do you spell Zephyr Recruiting? Yeah, it's Z-E-P-H-Y-R is the word Zephyr, and it means a gentle breeze. And then, of course, recruiting, (laughs) R-E-C-R-U-I-T-I-N-G. So it's ZephyrRecruiting.com is our website. And also I want to extend, there is a small cost to that video or to that live webinar. And we are, we would love to extend a 50% off to your listeners. Thank you. So yes. And it also includes a 30 minute consultation, free consultation with myself or my marketing manager post the webinar. So then we can actually really hone in on what your unique brand needs to be. And we can help give you some ideas on how to develop that. So it includes that as well. And just in case I don't have time, I'm going to say it now. We're also going to offer your listeners because I love your listeners so much. They're some of our absolute best clients. So we're offering through June 30th, a 15% discount on any of our services. So that's both recruiting and our employment brand marketing offer that we, that we do with our clients. So both of those. So do they need to identify themselves as tap the potential or profit by design? folks. Okay. They do. Yes, they do. And we will ask. So if you forget, don't worry, we'll ask. (laughs) But yes, they do need to be listeners of this podcast through June 30th, 2020. Okay. So mention profit by design or tap the potential and you will be in Aaron's good graces there. Yep. Or Mike or Sabrina, any of that'll work. (laughs) Any trigger words there. (laughs) Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. Mike, thank you for sitting through this. I know it was painful. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) He did a great job asking questions and I always appreciate, Mike, how you come at it from the the real life perspective of an entrepreneur and what Mm -hmm. somebody is really thinking through this and the challenges that come up in this process. Yes, I appreciate that perspective a lot. Mm -hmm. Thanks for what you guys do. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you for having me. I love being on podcasts with you. Well, we will. You're my favorite. Again in the future. Awesome. Bye. Bye. If you're like most business owners, you have a cash sucking business that's taking over your life. After the first year in our Better Business, Better Life program at Tap the Potential, you'll have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than you've ever had. Get started. Take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Profit by Design podcast Facebook group. Share your thoughts on today's episode, ask us questions, and let us know what you want to hear about next. Visit our website at ProfitByDesignPodcast.com to access resources from our sponsors and tools we've created for you. Subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening to right now. There's a subscribe button right there. Go ahead and hit it so that you always get a notification when we release a new episode. And finally, share our podcast with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. Thanks again for listening. This is real life business. Keep your chin up. Keep moving forward. You got this.